So I'm going to give you guys a pretty decent one today. So is what I've got going on here. Um, it's a 2016 Ford Taurus. It's a, a police interceptor. And I have been running in circles. Let me grab this from my dog here. Oh, by the way, we got a dog. How can we reverse the camera? Will it reverse? One more shot here. Look at that. She's six months old. Look at that. Look at her sitting all pretty. Six months old. Her name is Machi. So Machi is the shop mascot. That's what we got going on. She's getting big. We've had her for four months. All right, so we're just going to get right to the nitty-gritty on this. I got a bunch of airbag components here. I'm going to go over you guys a little situation I had going on, and it was not a pretty one. All right, so anyway, we got a 2016 Ford Taurus here, police interceptor. I'm about done with the car. It took a pretty good knock right in this left front. I mean, it took a nice hit. A big enough hit for these airbags to deploy. So, not only, you know, replaced all the sheet metal, headlight, fixed the push bar, put a bumper on it, fixed the hood on it. All right, so, get into the airbags. Let me find my light here. Actually, I just seen it on camera briefly. Can you guys see me okay? Can I uh, reveal the comments here? All right, there we go. Now I can see some comments. Can you guys see me okay? Hopefully we're not all blurry, choppy, things like that. All right, so here's a few of you coming on, though. So anyway, this car has been blowing some crazy codes. All right, well, at least the video is okay. It is a live one, so the quality isn't as uh, good as, you know, it should be anyway, but at least it's working. So this is what we got going. I just went back into history here on my Snap-on scanner. Um, ignore the top one. Uh, Seatbelt pre-tensioner circuit open. Um, let's go ahead and ignore that one. All right, let me get, there we go. All right, so then we're dealing with codes uh, B1415-11, driver side restraint, sensor two, circuit short to ground. And then we have B1418-11, passenger side restraint, sensor one, short circuit to ground. And I'm like, I'm pulling my hair out here. I'm like, the car got hit on the left front. All right. Replace the airbag, replace the clock spring. Up underneath the column, um, there is a there's a sensor there, okay, for the uh, for the column to collapse. And then you have your seatbelt pretensioner, which is down in there, right there. That's the seatbelt pretensioner, or the uh, seatbelt, um, the regular seatbelt, okay. And then you have the pretensioner, which is right here. All right. So when an airbag blows in a car, at least a modern car, you're dealing with a ton of components, and I'm going to show you most of those components right now. And then we're going to go back to these crazy, stupid codes. All right, so a lot of people think, well, when your airbag blows up, that's all we do, right? We just throw a new airbag in it. That's the old airbag. No day. Right behind that airbag that a lot of people don't know about, it's what they call a clock spring. All right, you know, you got all those little handy dandy buttons on your steering wheel, okay? And you could, you know, change your radio stations, you could beep your horn, you could do all sorts of stuff. Well, that clock spring, every one of them tabs in there pretty much indicates a button besides a ground. All right, so each of them little prongs in there, that's probably a button or a feature on your steering wheel. And then you have a ground, of course, to ground it all out. So when that deploys, generally, that goes bad. At least they say to change that. And then on your steering column, oh, yeah. You have a sensor down here. And I'll, just, I'll show you how to um, tell that it's blown. See that little red dot right there? All right, a little, little freaking thingy sticking out there, a little red doodad. All right, that should be in. That should be almost flush in there. 
All right, so as what happens when these airbags go off, it actually collapses the column just a little bit. You can't even notice it, but it collapses it just enough. Okay, it gives it a little bit of cush. So when your face hits that son of a bitch, it doesn't crush, crush your face as bad and blow out all your teeth. So the sensor in that goes bad. Then, in the center console, or under the center console, this is what they call a RCM, all right? Restraint Control Module. This also goes bad. Let's get into the seat belts. So usually the retractor, whatever position the seat belt was in, so if you were cruising and the airbag went off and your seat belt wasn't buckled, chances are you're not going to be able to retract your seatbelt. It's just going to be game over. It's not going to pull out. It's not going to work. It's not going to do anything. Generally, that blows. And then you have a pretensioner. So this actually hooks to there on your seatbelt. Okay, and it's your buckle. So that's what you buckle up. This usually goes too. This has got a charge in it. And as what happens is this thing actually tightens the seatbelt around your waist a little bit to hold you in that son of a bitch in car. All right, so while we're right here with the retractors, I'm gonna tell you how to tell the difference between a good one and a bad one, at least on a Ford product, 2016 Ford Tortoise to be exact. All right, so can you tell which one's good or which one's bad? We got them side by side here. Which one's good, which one's bad, all right? Well, I'm going to tell you which one's bad. This one. That's the bad one. How can you tell? See that little nub in the end of there? That little, what looks like a nut? It's out. It's almost flush with the end of that shaft. This one's a good one. It's way down in there, that nut. This one is also longer. All right, see the length difference there? This part here is shoved way down inside of this one. Yep. All right, so there's a little airbag 101. And then plus you have the whatever sensor got crushed to set all this stuff off. All right, so let's get back to my dilemma. Now that y'all got a little bit of history. And there's another thing too. With these airbag control modules, a lot of times when you buy those, they're not just plug and play. I paid, I don't know, 200 and something dollars for this module. Maybe closer to 300. I don't even remember. Might have been 300. And it's not programmed. So that's how they get you. So you put this thing in, you get it all together, and then you got to take it to Ford anyway and pay them 150, 200 dollars, whatever it is, to program that stupid thing. All right. So I'm going to show you guys a little secret. Some of you probably know about it. Some of you probably don't. Guess what? I didn't have to go to Ford to program it. I'm going to show you how I did it. And it cost you probably 70 bucks to do it yourself. All right. So, anyway, we're blowing these stupid codes. The B1415 and the B1418, they're both uh, shorts to ground. All right. So here I am thinking about this. Let's reverse the camera back to my ugly mug. There we go. So I'm like, the thing didn't get hit on the passenger side. This just, it makes absolutely no sense. It didn't get hit in the driver door or in the side of the vehicle at all. It was just a corner in front of the wheel, left front hit. Like, why is this thing blowing these stupid freaking codes? Like, what could be going on? And this, and guys, if you're working on police interceptor vehicles, this video might help you a touch. If you're not, you're just working on normal cars. All right, this part of the video probably won't help you a ton. All right, but anyway, I have been chasing this issue for a week. This car has been done for a week. It's been done so long, it's covered in freaking dust. <laughs> all right, and I washed it a week ago. Put it together, freaking got it all done, except for these stupid, um, what I was calling ghost codes. It's like, I, I wasn't getting it. So here's what happened with that. All right, let's reverse the camera back. I don't know what I did with my light. Hopefully it's here. 
All right, and I might take you out to the Explorer really quick just to give you an idea. Well, I guess I don't really have to. So these Fords, you see this plate right here? Can I magnetize this to something here? Is there any metal on these cars anymore? I guess that'll help a little. All right, so underneath this plate, that is your airbag control module. That's where they put them in a lot of cars. All right, they put them between the seats in the console somewhere. Usually you got to rip the center console out to get to these damn things. All right. So basically this plate, and this is how the interceptor vehicles come from Ford. They come with this huge plate, kind of like that. All right, still got the center console or the regular console we'll call that all right that you put your arm on but they put this plate across here so when you buy one of these ford products new they got this plate and that so you could mount i'll show you over here the radio stacks and the and the light controllers and siren controllers and all the goodies they put in these police cars all right look <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so all that gets bolted to this metal plate all right and how do they fasten that so this is the actual console that all the these radios and laptop and all this stuff sit on how do they fasten it most outfitters use self-tapping screws so guess where those screws go in those screws go in here you could see them where there's six of them all right well, guess what? These two, right there, line right up with that RCS module. And in my case, <laughs> I'll show you. Well, I actually fixed it now, so you really can't see a whole lot, but I did leave the wiring open. All right, so I guess I don't know if we want to call this a newbie mistake. All right, will the light stay there? All right, there we go. Let me see if I can get this picked up here out of the way again. So they got a harness. There's actually two harnesses that go to this. You got one that goes up. There you go. Right around the, by the driver's side seat. And the other one underneath the rug there where the rubber mat goes to the passenger side seat. So that's how those go. All right. Well, guess what? When I put one of these long ass screws back in here, the screw went right through that harness and caused my short to ground issues. Now it's not really an easy task to take one of these consoles out of these cars. It's about an hour to take it all apart and about an hour to put it all together. Guess what? <laughs> Done it twice. So yeah, I screw up, I admit I screw up. All right, but why they would use an inch and a half long self-tapping screw versus a half inch long self-tapping screw is beyond me. Because this console isn't really anything more than like, what, maybe 14 gauge steel. It's less than an eighth inch thick, like way less than an eighth. So why would you freaking put a screw an inch and a half long? And it's funny because uh, another outfitter that actually outfits all these cars new now, he didn't start doing um, <clears throat> this particular department's vehicles until I believe 18 or 19. This one's a 16, so he didn't outfit this car. And he's like, yeah, he says, one of the outfitters, I'll never forget it, run a screw right through the center of one of those RCM modules. <laughs> I'm like, what? He says, yep, we were talking about it. I'm like, interesting. So basically, one of their screws aren't right through one of these things and shorted the module out. So, let's see some comments. We got some comments kicking? All right. Yeah, I see one of you, like, where you been? <laughs> I've been so busy. Like, you don't even know. I can't even read the comments because this other damn thing is freaking... Can I move it? No, I can't even move this damn thing. All right. So yeah, I replaced the the, uh, the airbag control module, the bag, the clock spring, um, the seatbelt retractor. Um, I, I've replaced everything in this car. Still blowing these codes, and that's what caused it. Was a screw going right through the wiring on that module. All right. So I also said, hey, 
Yeah, actually, I could reverse the camera now. Look at that. We know how to do that. All right, there we go. Make her a little smaller. There we go. All right, so how do I program this myself? Like, you legitly have to go to Ford to do this. And me. I'm like, you guys, a lot of you have known me a very, very long time. I know you haven't seen me a whole lot lately because I've been a very busy man. But a lot of you know me, and you know that I always either try to find a good shortcut or some kind of loophole or, or some way to figure it out and simplify things. And the program is called Forescan. Not Forescan. New. No. Forescan. F O R S C A N. Forescan. All right. Here, we'll just exit out of here. Let me re reverse the camera onto the laptop now. All right, so we're just going to delete this here. We're going to get rid of this window. And we're going to show you guys how this is. So, Forescan. F-O-R-S-C-A-N. You guys can download this to your computer for nothing. But if you want to do cool stuff like what I'm doing, you got to pay like 40 bucks or something. All right, so let's uh, get this thing plugged in here. I showed you enough on the scanner. Let me find the cable. There we go. And we're going to plug in the laptop. I'm going to show you guys what this is all about. Pretty cool stuff. Sorry, it's dark. Sorry, I'm wiggly. All right. I'm just going to plug it into the OBD2 port. We're going to put a little juice into the system. Key on. No reason to really start it. Okay. You don't need to start it. We'll put our little dongly cable here. Plug her in the laptop. Laptop recognized it. Lit up. All right. So we're just going to double click on the force scan here. Alright, actually we're going to put it up here. We might get a little bit better Wi-Fi. I'm running this off the Wi-Fi right now. Alright, so basically the first window that pops up, if you use a computer, blah, 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 while operating a car, blah, 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 whatever. Okie dokie there, buddy. Alright, so now we're going to connect to this vehicle. Please make sure the following conditions are met, blah, 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 yep, keys on, blah, blah, blah. And now it should start connecting. Adapter is not optimized, so just hit the yes. You can get a Bluetooth module as well. All right, and basically this gives you the VIN number of the car. So we're working on a 2016 Tortoise with a 3.5 liter direct injection turbocharged. Yes. Now it's just going to load all the modules. All right, so found module, powertrain control, BD2, blah, 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 blah. RCM, restraint control module, zero codes. There is one in the power steering control module. Is that something to do with me? I doubt it. I doubt it. All right, but anyway, we can get into, let's see here. We could program these modules. Module as built format. So you got to have internet to do this in most cases because you have to download um, basically the as built format data for the car. But I'm going to download it. We'll just hit the run service procedure. Incorrect written value, maybe make the car non functional, blah, 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 blah. Okie dokie. All right, so this gets, gives you all the values, okay? So you can load, you can get in here and load factory A to B. So that's as built, or you could load all from a file. All right, and I'm going to show you something here. So we're going to load all the factory. Number of, fuck, number of blocks doesn't match, blah, blah, blah. All right, so basically we just restored the system, okay? which we, it's not necessary because I fixed it already, but it's just one of the things you can do. And you can get in here and you could program keys. You could do all sorts of happy, happy stuff. Well, it's what I did, I'm, and I'm just getting familiar with this program, so work with me. So load all. All right, so here we have VIN numbers from, there's actually three different vehicles here. Um, the bottom one is a 2018 vehicle. 
All right, so now we just uploaded all the information from that 2018 Taurus, and then we could put it right back into this particular car. And this is how I did it. So I went to another Taurus, <laughs> all right, and I downloaded all these blocks, and then I put them back into this car. The first time around, I actually loaded them directly from this website, all right, from ForceCan itself and put them in the car that way, which you can do, but I was afraid, because this is the first time I've ever done this, I was afraid maybe I had a bad download, you know, something, maybe the Wi-Fi was weak, you know, who knows, who knows? Um, so I'm like, so I went back down to the department that owns these vehicles, and I'm like, yo, I need to plug into one of your cars and steal some data. So they're like, all right, I mean, they know me, you know what I mean? So I went to their cars, I took a bunch of pictures, and, uh, you know, of data, like actually on the scanner, and I'll show you that in a second, on the Snap-on scanner. And I basically looked at all this data that the 2018 Taurus was showing me, compared it to my 16 Taurus I'm working on, and bada bing, bada boom, everything was right. I'm like, well, what's going on? Why am I still blowing these two codes? And then I finally figured it out. So we're just going to go back now on the scanner. Um, what would I rather work on, Taurus or Charger? I don't, they're all the same to me. I mean, it, it, I've been doing this crap so long, I, I don't even have fun with it anymore, honestly. I mean, my Charger, I love my Charger. I still have it. All right, so we're just going to go into previous vehicles and data here. <clears throat> Vehicle history. And you'll see here that we've got one, two, three Tauruses, and then my 13 Explorer as well. Um... Just because I was collecting all the data and comparing all the data I can to try to figure out these two freaking crazy codes. I'm like, what's going on here that was driving me insane? So then we're just going to hit, yep. Oh, maybe it helps if I connected the cable. Oh. Let's do that real quick. I still have my computer plugged into it here. She's plugged in now, so now we're going to go to data display, and I'm going to teach you guys something else about airbags. Oh, data display key must be on, engine off or running, doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. All right, now it's going to just basically show us all the data. All right, so a lot of the data on these are milliamps and ohms. All right, at least on the Fords, I don't know about every single car, but mostly on Fords, you're looking at roughly two and a half ohms of resistance per um, piece of the airbag system. So what I mean by per piece is like each airbag, um, the steering column, the seat belts. All right, so if you look at these, hopefully you can see them. I mean, we're 2.35. 2.95, 290, we got 13.8 volts, or that's 13.8 milliamps, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, everything is between 2 and 3 ohms. So that's what you want, generally, with an airbag system. Certain things are going to show you zero until they deploy, like these load limiters, the pretensioners, okay? And is what I was coming up with, um, I was running into a problem with the actual retractor on this thing. It was showing 65 ohms. 65 ohms is basically a broken circuit. All right? And that's how I ended up discovering that the retractor itself was bad. I unplugged it, and it was still showing 65 ohms. I'm like, well, that retractor's bad. I can show you guys how to test that as well but it'll be tough trying to hold a phone and two prongs and a piece of plastic maybe we'll do that in another video if you guys are actually interested in this stuff so basically is what I did is I went to two other Tauruses looked at all this data took pictures of every single screen and then I compared them to what this car was doing alright and there you are 
All right, so everything's basically between two and three ohms. I mean, it even shows you here. Watch, move the seat. It'll tell you if it's all the way forward, all the way back, or it should. So there you go. It's closer to forward now than backwards. I mean, that's how smart these systems are in these cars. They know where your damn seat sets. They know if your seat belt's buckled. And that's another thing with the Forescan uh, program. You could actually turn the dingers off with that. I'm going to shut the old scanner down here. Power it off. All right. So, we've been going for 25 minutes. Hopefully, you guys learned a little something from my video tonight. Let's see what we got for some comments here. And somebody said, I seen a doggy. Yep. Machi. What you doing, Machi? Say hi to all our YouTubers. Say hi. Six months and two days old. 100% pure bred German Shepherd. She is a good little doggy and she is dirty. She is dirty from playing at the hack and pack shop. She hangs out with me here all day, every day. She comes to work with me. She's my little sidekick. All right, guys. Well, we're going to conclude it. Hopefully I can do another video sometime soon. It's busy here. I just, it's been insane. And the stupid carbon fight just with this one carbon fight in a week with these problems. But at least I figured it out. Hopefully it helps you guys out a little bit. All right, but I'm going to get rolling. I want to go home. I want to eat dinner. All right, take a shower. Maybe watch a movie. So thanks. Thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Off. Awesome.